this could be the final match tonight. The two titans of this group, Boom Boom and Noblesse, are going to battle it out. Yeah. And uh, Hollywood just called, they want to offer Noblesse a role in uh, the remake of The Untouchables. Because this guy, he has defeated them all. He is now playing his last game of the day. He's playing against Boom Boom. If he wins, it's all over. You know, for me, uh, watching this, Crazy took the 3-1 to tie with Boom Boom and will beat him in the direct comparison. But Boom Boom looked more dominant in his games. Crazy beat Boom Boom in a ZBZ, but Boom Boom has looked crazily good in this matchup. Yeah. This may be the one game Noblesse loses. It might be, but if Noblesse takes it, then he is going to advance to Godess together with Crazy. So Crazy really, really hopes for Noblesse to win. Boom Boom would take third place and get into a potential wildcard group if we have it. And on the other hand, if Boom Boom now takes the game, then it all comes down to the question whether Crazy is going to win or lose against Alive. But now we're focusing on this game first. We have Boom Boom, the guy who named himself after farting noises. No joke. And on the other hand, of course, we have the Chipmunk Terran player. Nobles. Exactly. Nobles oblige. Can he be defeated? He looks unstoppable. He's on fire. He's got the momentum going for him. Yeah. He certainly does. He's not in Codest just yet. We could have a three-way tie situation between Nobles, Crazy, and Boom Boom. But he certainly has the best chances now. Going into the next game, we'll, we'll find out if Nobles and Crazy advance to Codest or if Boom Boom saves himself the chance to advancing right away with the GSL up and downs with Paulo and Wolf. And the Zerg player starting to the top right. He's in, uh, starting in red, a former Prime player. Joined MJ, now he's playing for Azubu. Yes. Azubu Boom Boom. Boom Boom. He used to eat a lot of cheeseburgers during his celebrations. I actually missed that. Yeah, you did. You, you missed it, man. By the way, to the top it's right of the, the IDs, but to the bottom left of the map, it is... MVP Noblesse! <laughs> you do that all the time. You know what you should do? You should... No, actually, you shouldn't do that. Oops, apparently we have a pause. Or no, I think it's just someone's cheerful. Ah. That we don't get to see. Suddenly the light turned on in the studio, and I was all surprised. Usually that happens when we have a technical issue, but it was, yeah, because of the cheerful. Yeah, I can't read it, but it's too far away. We might even see it on camera. Yeah, maybe later. Well, right now we have a very normal opening in this game. Uh, Noblesse is not going for any early barracks shenanigans that are proxied in the middle of the map. He's not going to pull a labyrinth here. Boom Boom, on the other hand, he starts things off with a pool first. At least that's why. Uh, sorry, with a hatch first. That's at least what he wants to do. Yes. Could have been blocked a little bit. Not the case the though. That's the hatch indeed, and uh, let's see what kind of game we are gonna watch right now. This is a very, this is a map where it's tough to take your third base. We've seen this several times, especially Protoss players are struggling uh, with it quite a bit against Zerg. As a Terran, it depends on which kind of style you're playing. And Boom Boom actually played today already against Terran on this map. He did, and we've seen that on this map, it's pretty hard to use mech effectively because the third base is far away. But if you stay on two bases for a little bit longer, get up a strong bio force, then you can try to bully the Zerg player's third. You know, it's it's funny, it's whoever sets the pace of the game is the one who's gonna feel more comfortable with the third. If you're the one who's not setting the pace of the game, your opponent has map control, that third base just feels so far away. Yeah, it's just taking the risk. And sometimes it even doesn't get scouted. So Boom Boom has all the information that he needs now. He knows that there's an expansion being built. Oh, that SCV is being cornered. It's a really tense game. If Noblesse wins here, then he is in Code S, and it would also mean that Crazy is in Code S as well. And Boom Boom, Boom, Boom takes third. Exactly. Boom Boom would take third place and therefore have a shot in a potential wildcard group. But if suddenly Boom Boom takes this match, um, then everything changes. Everything changes immediately. We suddenly have the next game between Crazy and Alive becoming so important because if Crazy then takes the next game, he would actually advance to Code S. Um, no, actually, we would have the three-way tie, sorry. Only if Alive wins against Crazy, then we have the same situation where Boom Boom and Noblesse advance to Code S and Crazy takes third base. Oh, that's, that may happen. Depends on the situations that arise next. But Boom Boom here, right now, playing Gasless, going into four queens. 
a little bit weird for this map. Usually, well, you're, you can play a few different styles in this map. You can get speed out to have better map control and control that third base, which is a little bit further away. Or you can get the queens to be good against Hellions, but also spread your creep to the third a lot faster. There's several things that you can do, as you already pointed out. And with him playing Gasless and get the extra queens here, you can turn a little bit more onto bases, especially when you just have the wall set up. So that's the style that he can use here. And with Boom Boom, we have so many different styles that he could play. He really likes to go into Mutalisk play, which is something that you can do on this map. We've seen this several times. But on the other hand, if you claim the third base, if you spread the creep all that far to the left, then you have a really good shot. And he's actually going to take this third. He's already moving down with the drone. And then he has to be a little... Th then it becomes important when do you actually saturate the base. Yeah. Because it's very vulnerable to a Hellion harass. The Hellions will never kill a hatchery but they will kill your drones, and you're so right. The saturation is the, the next question. Gas coming up for Boom Boom at the natural now, double gas. And Noble S takes a fast third command, sir, in the main. Despite the double gas, he's not going into Banshees. At least not yet. Starts a tech lab now. This will be for his STEM research on his barracks. A lot of gas here for Boom Boom now. He could really go into a Spire build once again. He's shown it in this up and down group that he really loves the Spire play. What is Noblesse going to do on the other hand? He's the one player that seems untouchable right now. The one player that beat everyone in this group. Can he also take down Boom Boom? Boom Boom won both his matches against Terran. He only lost against Zerg. Boom Boom is spreading his creep. Three tumors apiece in two directions right now. One towards the third, the other towards just the other pathway into his natural. And Noblesse will find the third base here if he sends his Hellions up right now. And this is going to make him feel a little bit pressured to do something about it. He may even move his own Commander down a little bit faster than he would have normally done. He's going back to... He has two factories. Going this into Mech here. Expected. But I feel he's going to play it a l very, very different from what we've seen uh, from a Labyrinth when Boom Boom played him on this map. The layer tech has been started for Boom Boom, and he's going into uh, the first set of upgrades. He's going into plus one, plus one, and the one upgrade that he goes for with attack is the melee upgrade. What you want to do if your opponent goes mech is always focus on the roaches, but he doesn't know yet what's going on. Yeah. He has no uh, vision at all. Oh. This is something that Noblesse has hidden really well. Pretty early double armory too. He's not delaying the up double armory at all. He wants to get fast upgrades here. This is something we've seen Maru, in fact, do in the past. I really like what Noblesse is doing. He's doing things a few ways differently than what we saw earlier from Labyrinth. He takes third base very quickly. He's moved down. It's already there. He scouts the third. And he says, I'm moving mine over too. You're not going to be able to attack my third base this early in, in, unless you don't have a hatchery, unless you have fast mutas like we saw in yeah. the previous game. And it so, looks a little bit like this is actually what we are going to see here. So far we have the upgrades, yes, for the ground units, but the Baning Nest has been added and thus, especially with the experience that we have with Boom Boom's play on this map against Terran, lets us to believe that he's once again going for a Spire, and there it is, yeah. for Mutaling Baning. It just makes sense. Now, Noble S has his third base up. He's not really saturating it just yet, he's just continuing SCV production. He's getting a few extra minerals. Double Thor's come out first. He's studied and knows the style of Boom Boom. He's already watched a game on this map with Mech against Boom Boom, where Mutas were the choice. So he goes into two Thor's first. If it's Roaches he faces, that's fine. He hasn't made refineries as third base. He can lift out and use the Thor's to defend his natural. Look at this just constant aggression with his Hellions, too. This is very annoying for Boom Boom to deal with. Yeah. It definitely is. The Thors are now on their way out and they are done way before the Spire is actually in play. So if he gets additional Thors, he should easily be able to defend his bases. The main question is how exactly will he try to defend his third base? This is the weak point. The weak point indeed. I mean, Boom Boom is doing something else I really like. He's going... Whoa! All those banlings are spotted. Noblesse now has a ton of information. Yeah. But Boom Boom is taking a fourth and he's making a macro hatch at his third. So he has a lot of larva coming through. This is going to be great for his lings. The problem, of course, is that lings are not really what you want against this type of composition. Especially when it's uh, when it gets to be bigger numbers of units. Yeah, and also at some point we will see blue flame and everything. We already have the siege mode being researched. The Thors are transparent to Boom Boom. Missile turrets have been built. Immediately the change into the range attack upgrades. He shows all of his Hellions here, but you know what? Against these links, he's going to be happy to. Yeah, this time uh, Boom Boom is not able to trap 
the Hellions in the corner. Yeah, Roach Warren gets started here as he starts to realize what's going on. But you know, Noblesse is now turtling on three bases. He wants to get the mech army out. He knows that there are a lot of weak points if you play the strategy at the beginning. That it shows its strength a little bit later in the game. But this allows Boom Boom to spread his creep without any problems at all. His creep spread is insanely good here. His larva injects are also good. He's got the macro hatch. His larva is not going to be a problem, especially now that he's going to switch out of Zerglings for the most part. He starts his Roach upgrades, gets speed. This first wave of Mutas is only going to accomplish about this much. He's going to get a few SCVs here, and then he's going to have to be done because the Thors are out, the turrets are in place. He uh, does a lot with these, though. Yeah, he does a lot, but he's about to lose more Mutalists. He's losing one, two, the Thor is actually just about to be in range. The next one comes in, and all the Mutalists will be gone. That has to be another missile turret somewhere in the base. Yeah, I think there's going to at least be one of the natural. Oh, is it worth it, Boom Boom? Do you really want to get stop that turret? <laughs> I guess yeah, not. Yeah, he kind of wants to stop the turret, but in the end, the Thor and the missile turret, they are enough to take down. The other thing the is, he's not really going to want these Mews later anyways, so if he saves them, it's like, well... There's only, those are the only two Mews he had left. He only made five. And now we have high of techs not only started but nearly completed. Boom Boom finally losing a few creep tumors as Noblesse is the one who pushes out now, even scans and takes down more. But we have now plus two plus two being started for Noblesse. He really wants to have these upgrades out early. Also the blue flame man, that scans and sees the hive timing. This is such a crucial scan. This gives him the opportunity to now prepare for the blue boards really well. One siege tank for so many Zerglings lost here, he's not even going to be able to get very many harvesters. He gets none, in fact. This is not a good trade for Boom Boom. He's not even maxed. He has a bank coming on that he wants to use for his Greater Spire, but look at the supply. It's relatively even, and Noblesse could move utilize out. this timing, yeah. He could move out and just hit a pre brood law timing. Does he realize it, though? There is not a lot that Boom Boom has to stop this, to be completely honest with you. I mean, let's have a look at his composition. He has Roaches, a bunch of Investors, but not too many, and Zerklings against Blue Flame Hellions. Plus two, plus two will be completed as soon as he arrives at the top right. Counter attacks is basically the only thing that Boom can try to attempt, and that's exactly what he tries to do. But Siege Tanks are on the high ground doing damage. Yeah, he needs to raise that depot. Oh, this is actually going to be so tense. This starts to look almost like uh, Protoss versus Zerg with just all the spines he's trying to build desperately to get the Brew Lords out. And the word that you just used just describes the situation very well. He's desperate. He really wants to have something that can stop this push. He needs to buy time. He needs Brood Lords. But Noblesse is already transitioning into a double star point because he wants to get the Vikings. Yeah, he's held the attack at the natural as well. Lots of SVs here to repair. The investors are trying to do what they can. Rare Spire is done, and he has held this. He will be able to make Brew Lords, but as soon as Noblesse pulls out, he's already done a lot of damage. And he also lost his fourth base, something that we should not forget yeah. here. The economy of him is really in a tight spot. It's also the Brew Lords aren't ready yet, and the Spine Colors are gone. If those investors die, then Boom Boom is still in a tight spot, even though he has the Brew Lords. Yeah, I feel he will be able to push this back now with the Brew, so the Thor count. It's only at two. The initial two Thors made earlier, he still got them. Once again, they attempt to fungal here, but he exposes the Infestors. Two of them die. The Brute Lords will become a problem for Noblesse, though. In just a few seconds, they will be ready. Yeah, and here they come. He needs to move back now. Noblesse needs to get out of here. He cannot afford to lose all of these mech units. He's trying to trade, isn't he? No, he's moving back. He's he moving back. Out. He's trying to, well, he's actually attempting to chase him down. Elliot's Where coming are to the help? Vikings? Vikings are late. The Brew Lords come in a little bit late as well, though. Brew but Noblesse is losing way too much. Noblesse is losing it's definitely too much here. He's losing the siege tanks. He's losing nearly all of them. He's trying to commit to this attack, but now he's just on the run. And the Vikings, yes, they're being built, but the gas is going to be an issue. He even builds another reactor here, which will give him a crazy amount of production. But can he really pull it off with only 50 minerals in the bank? Gas it is, so. Uh, this is going to be really difficult, that's for sure. The Hellions get trapped here as well. They do not get the run by off. Noblesse massively down in supply here, and Boom Boom has remade his fourth. Resources lost are still fairly similar, but Noblesse definitely in the worst position. I, I feel Noblesse may not be able to recover and build the rest of his army. He's got... He's just so down on supply. He has the Vikings out that are going to be really helpful, but what about the Roaches and the Lynx on the ground? Well, I feel he can deal with the Roaches and the Lynx very well. He just has to make sure that those Brood Lords are not going to be a problem. And I'm not quite sure if he's there yet. I actually doubt it. Not against this many Queens with Transfusers. He needs another round of Vikings. He just doesn't have it yet. Queens are even going to help out anti-air-wise. 
Hellions do try to sneak in here, but there are spine crawlers. He's gonna kill a few drones, but only a few. Yeah, but now the Viking count is actually increasing. Maybe he's able to pull it off, but it's really, it's, it's a, a fight just on belly on the edge. It's like crazy. It really is a knife, a knife edge fight here. Noblesse just trying to get those Vikings out. He's gonna get plus one here. He has ten, and he will have thirteen in just a second. Now he has to split them well against the Fungals. Yes, there are seven Infestors on the map. <laughs> Plus two for Roaches is out as well. Double Command Center. He realized, hey, I have way too many minerals. I need to do something with those. Let's get Double Command Center. Makes sense, but he will need a fourth base eventually. He can't stay on three bases forever while Noblesse, uh, or rather, well, Boom Boom is on four. Eventually, it's just not going to matter. It doesn't matter if he kills all these Brutalos four times if he doesn't have the money to remake his Vikings. And here we go. He needs to get in a position with his Vikings now. He needs to make sure that they're not clumped up. A mass fungal would be devastating to him. Uh, he can keep him clumped as long as he's away from the investors right now, but once the investors like this get close... Uh-oh. Oh, oh the the investors! Oh, oh my god, three of them. Bam, obliterated, one-shotted. Now this is not good for Boom Boom, but he still has a dominant position. He can actually just wait here almost all day and build up Larva and build the bank. He's getting a fifth base now. He already has the fourth at the right side, and the bottom right is now being taken too. Plus the macro hatch. Nopales, on the other hand, is getting a good position. You know, he's actually closing the gap in supply. Nopales throws away more Hellions here, trying to kill drones at the top left. He's relatively unsuccessful. He does get a few. In total, he killed about the same amount as Boom Boom killed SCVs. Both of them have with 12, 13 worker kills. And Nopales is ahead in Harvesters right now, 62 to 55, which is a little bit weird. All things considered. Yeah, Boom Boom is playing this a little bit low EQ at this point, which also gives him a huge amount of, yeah, of uh, army supply. Nobles, let's look at that army supply. Nobles is down 22 army supply, eh? 136 to 114. We actually have like an Ultras Kevin being built against Mech. Uh, well, I guess we have only one Thor, but still. Yeah, but the Siege Tank Cow is at 8, and he can make a lot more than that. Well, with only one Thor, it's kind of okay, I guess. But as soon as we have more Thors, those the yeah, those Ultralis will do little to nothing. The boom, boom boom drone count is getting lower. He goes down to 58 now with another Hellion run by, and he's trying to get into this other base to trade against the Links. Boom boom does not have a bank, despite the fact that he had this aggressive position because Noblesse is being so cost efficient. Look at how he kills those Links. Yeah, he still has a supply lead, but he does not have the bank. You're so right. Corruptors 21, Vikings 26. This is all about splitting. If yes. you split well, then uh, Boom Boom should be probably overpowered here. Noblesse is also adding more Thors for AoE. One thing we could see him add potentially is a Raven or two, but it's hard to switch into that right now. He just doesn't have the gas. Yeah, and he also doesn't have the tech lab equipped at the starboard. He'd have to do some switching. Yeah, and that would limit his production, so could help, but if he's able to get it, that's a different question. That Viking flower, it's like a yeah. Viking flower patch. The funny thing is that usually what you try to do is you go into this massive amount of units and then as soon as your opponent takes down your army, you switch into ground units and the Vikings become useless. But that's something Boom Boom can't do without a bank, which he doesn't have. Yeah, he's starting to build it a little bit here. Well, the Boro right next to Missile Turret has rarely been successful and this makes this, this is no exception. No, no exception to the rule. Siege tanks need to be sieged to deal with these roaches. This Brutling Harass may be a problem though, once the Vikings come to start connecting, he cannot clump like that in the fight, or he will lose it. Noblesse going for the flower power here. He can one-shot so much, the planetary is helping out against the roaches, it's finally done. With good repair. repair. And he does. Yeah, he repairs and that should not be a problem. Fungals, this is what Boom Boom needs now. If he gets the Fungals off against Noblesse, and he can win this. That command is as good as gone. Fungals, Thor shots, spreading on the Vikings. That's what this fight is going to come There's down to. No split. Yeah, he, he's really scared me. He's actually got them set up move command on top of the Thor. Oh, this is going to be terrible. He's trying to take the Infestors out, and as soon as the Infestors are gone, everything is going to be fine for him. This oh, is and a the Infestors are now. gone! And here comes Noblesse's Vikings. The Thor really helping out here as well. The Infestors are all dead. The Infestors are dead, and the Thors are doing a good amount of damage to those Corruptors. The Vikings are still kiting them, trying to get the better fight here. Even we have turrets. 14 against 20. This is so much better for Noblesse now, at least in the air battle. Yeah, the turret's even helping out a little bit. And he can actually just turn and fight at this point. And, and then does. the Broodlords are stuck. They are sitting ducks now. They have nowhere to go. 
But he did kill Noblesse's fourth base. He killed the fourth base, and Noblesse has another base to the left side of the map where he's currently mining from. But now we have a 40 supply lead for Boom Boom. Now here comes the fight. He needs to take down the reinforcements. He needs to take down the Corruptors he's and trying the to repair the Vikings, And the Queens are also an issue here. The Queens are still transfusing, and they're also fighting. Yeah, this is a really close game. Noblesse now moving to the north a little bit. He has no way of limiting the mining of Boom Boom. Boom Boom's drone count is low, but he still has better consistent mining right now. This is getting so dangerous now for Noblesse. He's actually losing the, the... He could lose this game in just a few seconds. There are way too many Corruptors now. The reinforcements are there for Boom Boom. The Zerg is at 12 Corruptors against 13 Vikings, but we have 5 Queens and 9 Infestors to help out. Yeah, I don't know where these units are going. I guess they're trying to catch the Brewlords in the middle of the map, but if he, he actually could lose the game over being out there like this. Noblesse needs to move his main command sorry, field to his old third base and yeah. take that gas. Mining becomes too much of an issue now for Noblesse. Boom Boom is at 170 supply against 120. He has those extra bases at the bottom right. The left the base with the planetary is really important for Noblesse. It's his lifeline now, but he needs more than that. One mining base just is not enough in this scenario. Yeah, not even close. This is a, a battle that, I mean, for example, he's not Mike from Italians, but even if he did, there's too many spines. This is a battle that Noblesse is playing against Boom Boom and against Time. 11 Infestors should seal the deal here. I this agree. is so scary. One good fungal. You only need one. From that point on, you can chain fungal. Just enough roaches here to help deal with the siege tanks. Even some infested Terrans being dropped. Perfect split on that tank. It's not only the Vikings, it's not only the Infestors. The Queens too with all those transfusers and the Antia. There comes a fungal against all those SCVs that Noblesse can't use anymore anyways. Yeah, he, he doesn't even have enough resources to get a good repair. He's down 80 supply now. It doesn't really look like he can win his final game. It looks like Boom Boom is going to tie the score with Noblesse. Yep. Look at that Viking group. So much power there, but not against the AoE and the healing that Boom Boom's army has to offer. It's just the, it's just the fungals. The fungals are the problem. What you're is so this? you're so scared of a good funnel against your Vikings. This group of siege tanks and Thor just keeps walking across the map. I, he's like stopping at Vester run by, I suppose. He's actually taking down the roads to the Vorborid here and is even able to take a few of those defenses down. But the upgrades are also getting crazy for Boom Boom. He's going into the Ultralisk upgrade and also the plus three armor for his corruptors. Well, this is weird. He just does not have enough. I mean, this siege tank group is, is worthless. All Noblesse has now is his air army. The unit count is three Hellions, one Thor, 23 Vikings, and four siege tanks. That's it. Yeah, but 23 Vikings against 20 Corruptors, 11 Infestors, and five, five queens. queens. This does not look good for Noblesse at all. He doesn't have anything, whereas Boom Boom has a sick bank, is maxed out, has great upgrades. This really looks like Boom Boom is going to close it out. Noblesse with these weird tank forces running around the map trying to, I suppose, find hidden hatcheries. Seeing SCVs now. Oh, the fungals! He's Last time he, he took the engagement okay because he got those perfect tank shots, but just not going to be so this time. Oh! Oh! Perfect. Yeah, there he is. That's, that's what he needs. That is not all of the Vikings, but that's enough. And, you know, otherwise, besides this, he had perfect range on those Corruptors, and he still continues this a little bit, but Boom Boom can just replace everything he loses. That's yeah. not true of Noblesse. 18 Vikings, that's all that's left there. 10 additional Corruptors have now been started. This puts Boom Boom to 29 Corruptors with plus 3 armor against just 18 Vikings. That, there's no way. I agree. Uh, the plus 3 Carapace finishes soon. 10 more Corruptors. Before that, there was a chance, but at this point, can he win the air fight? I don't think so. He's spending gas on a sensor tower in the middle of the map. This is not going to be valuable. Oh, the Vikings. What can they really do here? They can never find the right angle. Eight spores being made. Boom Boom is just making spores with his army now. And he takes this expansion. <laughs> he takes the expansion. He's actually just asking him politely to get out. Yeah, he's getting into third base now where Noblesse earlier had his own third. This is like a bit 
this is definitely just showing him how dominant he currently is in this game. Noblesse is trying to clear up yeah. Reap to the north with a small force. Noblesse looked superhuman in all the matches today, but against Boom Boom on this map, he cannot win. At least not, not right now. Not in this matchup. He seems to be struggling a little bit. Boom Boom is dominant in CBT. Yeah. This is the third CVT that Boom Boom plays today, and this is also going to be his third win in this matchup. He will be tying the score with Noblesse. He will be 4-1. And uh, it all comes down to the match between Crazy and Alive, which is going to be the next one. Crazy can force a three-way tie. Alive is the one who can prevent it, who can help Boom Boom and Noblesse to advance to Kodas. Noblesse wants to take this gold base. Well, let's try everything that he can, and uh, the gold base in the middle is the only chance that he has. Boom Boom is really having some trouble closing this game out. He will catch about four Vikings here. I don't really think he has trouble. I think he's playing just way too safe. He wants to make sure that he did everything in his power to go to Kodes. He doesn't want to have any regrets. Well, this may be his closing move. Yeah. Whatever Boom Boom, or sorry, whatever Nobles does here, it's going to be a long shot. get bungled, finally! The this Corruptors is... seal yeah. the deal. Fungles on the siege tanks. Even the Queens are fighting. Where are the Brood Lords to close this? They're moving in right now. There's no anti air left anymore. Not a single Viking in this game. There's nothing that can shoot into the air. 65 supply. Noblesse is going to lose this game. And he might actually end up in a three-way tie even after a 4-0 start in this group. GG. Boom Boom is happy. But he's, he's, really not, he's not there yet. But he did, he did everything that he could. And Oblast, he was a heavy panda, a heavy chipmunk earlier. Now he is a little bit worried. He's not out of things just yet, but it all depends on Crazy versus Alive. And keep in mind, Alive is out. There's nothing to lose for Alive anymore. No chance to get third, no chance to get into Kodas. For Crazy, everything's on the line. If Crazy wins this game now, we have a three-way tie between Boom Boom, Noblesse and Crazy. And gonna go into a tiebreaker. If Alive takes this, it means that Noblesse and Boom Boom both will advance. That's it. Yep. So it's all up to Alive for Crazy. And I mean, it's up to Crazy for Crazy, obviously, but you know, everything is on Alive here. The player who, for him, nothing matters. Exactly. So the question is, who has the better bribes? There are two players who depend on him, so he could actually demand a lot. I want Soju, I want Kimchi. I don't know. I don't know. I'm both just of those things are pretty cheap. Yeah, that's actually right. I'm like, he could probably just get both of those for free really easily. But Alive is a really modest guy. Exactly. Uh, Alive is also one of those players who's not going to easily give up yeah. in a group like this. And of course, fact, every single player, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but every single player we've seen like in the up and downs so far in all these groups is Group D, our fourth group. Everyone who's been the sandbag player yeah. has always had like an epic closing game, whether they win or lose it. Have you noticed this? Yes, with Hero, for example, a yeah. lot of them have been uh, crazy matches. So, of course, we were joking only a little bit. You can be assured that all of these players, even though nothing is on the line anymore, will give their best, especially Alive, who doesn't have a team and wants to show that he is definitely a player to be taken serious. If he goes out of this group with a 1-4, that's definitely sending a different message than if he is only down one single game, has two wins and only three losses. So, he will definitely give his best here in the next game also to support two fellow ESF players that is definitely going to be the case here Cloud Kingdom the map in game three crazy versus alive players are ready observer is ready I'm ready Caldor is ready oh yeah Cloud Kingdom set 13 unlucky 13 if you are alive because he has to play this match no matter what Nothing on the line for him. Nothing to gain, nothing to lose. For Crazy, this is everything. He has to win here, and that's where it starts. That's where the three-way tie starts. We are jumping into the game. Cloud Kingdom, it might be the last match of the day. Are oh, we heading into a three-way tie? We are going to find out right now at the GSL Up and Out Group D with Caldon Wolf. <laughs> 